velocity vectors are also transformed under Lorentz transformations. If we consider two frames, s and s prime, and assume that s prime is moving along the positive x direction of s, then we can see what happens to a velocity vector u that was as formally viewed in s as it will look in s prime. s prime will report that the velocity vector u looks somewhat different and will be some new vector u prime. Let's start with the idea that u prime has two components. It has a component in the direction of the motion, so let's say dx prime dt prime, and it has a component perpendicular to the motion between the two frames, so we'll say uy prime is dy prime dt prime. Each frame should be able to write its own equations of dx dt or dy dt or dx prime dt prime and dy prime dt prime. We need to know all these differentials dx prime, dy prime, and dt prime. And to do that, we're going to use the Lorentz transformations. Remember that the Lorentz transformations give us the difference between coordinates in the two frames. x goes by the usual formula, x is equal to gamma x prime plus vt prime. y is unchanged and it equals y prime. And t equals gamma t prime plus v x prime over c squared. Of course, we can always go back and forth between frames, and we can write down on the left-hand side of these equations, equations x prime is gamma x minus vt, and so on. We just have to switch the velocity goes to minus velocity. From these, we can calculate the differentials. dx will equal gamma dx prime plus v dt prime. dy will equal dy prime. dt equals gamma dt prime plus v dx prime over c squared. Now we can rewrite this a little bit. dx prime is equal to ux prime dt prime, just by virtue of how we defined what ux prime is. dy prime will equal uy prime dt prime, again, using the de definition of how we said what uy prime is. And dt prime, we can factor out the dt, excuse me, dt, we can factor out the dt prime and have a 1 in the first term and a ux prime in the second term. Now we want to take ratios and find out what ux and uy are, are as viewed in s. ux, of course, is just dx over dt, and uy will be dy over dt. If we take those ratios, we find that ux can be written as a function of ux prime and the velocity v between the two frames, and uy can be written as a function of uy prime, ux prime, and the velocity v between the two frames. Remember again, v is the, is the speed at which this frame s prime moves to the right in this picture. ux and uy are the velocity of some particle as viewed in s, and ux prime and uy prime are what an observer over in this frame, s prime, would report for that velocity vector u. We can of course get the inverse relationships and put ux prime on the left hand side of the equation and ux in, inside this complicated formula here. To do that, we need to go to the inverse Lorentz transformations, the ones which have v swapped to minus v, and follow the very same procedure we just did. In this case, we'll find that ux prime is ux minus v over 1 minus v ux over c squared, and so on. Notice that these formulae have Galilean relativity built in for free. If these second terms uh, are considered separately, notice that when v is very small compared to the speed of light, the second term in the denominator always goes to 0, and the entire denominator goes to 1 in which case we have ux is equal to ux prime plus v, or we have uy is just equal to uy prime. When v goes to 0, gamma goes to 1. So these formulae essentially reproduce the more familiar results from Galilean relativity, but are relativistically correct because they don't allow any particle 
to go above the speed C report as reported by any observer in any reference frame.